Do I have to do anything for this? Yeah, it's on. So, hello. Uh, it's so good to be back in Gunnersville, and especially back at the First Methodist Church in Gunnersville. It has a very special place in my heart. Um, I don't know about you, uh, you know, we we look like we're various ages this morning, but uh, I'm at that time in my life where um, uh, I can't remember like I used to. Um, I, th- th- are we the only ones or are we typical? You know, you get up and you go into the kitchen to get something, and on the way you see something else, and and then you, you do that, you take out the garbage or whatever it is you see, and then you go sit back down, and then you realize you didn't get what you went in the kitchen for, and, and then you go back into the kitchen, and the, kind of the same thing happens. And, and it's, it's almost like there's sensors in your backside where when you sit down, you remember what you didn't get. Does that, does that happen to anybody else? And, and our conversations at the house have changed. You know, when we're getting ready to go to bed. We're cutting out the lights. It's now, now it's, did you take your medicine? <laughs> Life changes, doesn't it? Yes. Exodus chapter 12. I want to read the 14th verse, the 17th verse, and the 24th verse. It was a long passage, but I picked out the gist of it to read this morning. You can go back and read the whole chapter. It says, this is a day to remember each year from generation to generation. You must celebrate it as a special festival to the Lord. This is a law for all time. Celebrate this festival of unleavened bread, for it will remind you that I brought your forces out of the land of Egypt on this very day. This festival will be a permanent law for you. Celebrate this day from generation to generation. Remember, these instructions are a permanent law that you and your descendants must observe forever. There's some things I'll never forget. I'll never forget the day that we were in Sears Roebuck. I was six years old. We were, my birthday is November the 27th, and we were there to get me a birthday present. There were no Walmarts back then. There were no Kmarts back then. If you wanted something, you went downtown. If you live in Birmingham, you went downtown to Sears Roebuck. And uh, we were in that, if you've ever been there, we were in that large aisle that went down through there where they, you know, tossed the stuff on the carpet and vacuumed it up to try to influence you to buy a vacuum cleaner and where the record aisles are and you, you that are younger don't even know what a record is and and all of a sudden around the TVs that, you know, were not out that many years at that moment in time, there was this big crowd. And I remember my dad going up to a man in a wheelchair and said, uh, pardon me, partner, something going on? And the man wheels himself around and looks up and tears are coming down his face. And he said, sir, someone has shot our president. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget July the 15th, 1978, when I stood in my white suit with my brown shirt and really wide white tie with this 17-year-old beauty. And the minister said, will you take this woman to be your wedded wife? And I said, I will. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget the day in seminary uh, at in Atlanta, uh, went to Emory Candlery School of Theology, and there was a little place down the hill called Everybody's Pizza, and we had gone to Everybody's Pizza, and Everybody's Pizza was one of these places where you could not hear yourself think. Uh, it was, you know, all college students and, and graduate students, and and it was just really loud, and and you know there were seven, eight of us eating pizza, and you know we were having to holler across the table to hear each other. And on the TV screens, there was TVs everywhere. Uh, the space shuttle was blasting off. And I was eating a piece of pizza, watching the space shuttle, and all of a sudden, the space shuttle disappeared. And the loud room went 
deathly silent as we all tried to figure out what, what just happened. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget the day that uh, President Reagan stood and said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget Auburn winning the national championship. <laughs> Now, now, to you Alabama fans, you have to say, which national championship, you know? It's not hard for us, you know? Like, once a generation. I was there. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget those planes flying into those buildings. Standing in front of my television thinking, oh God, what, what just happened? I'll never forget that day. And I'll never forget the cross. Several years ago, a movie came out called The Passion of the Christ. Maybe you saw that when it was on. I saw it probably three times, maybe four. Took various groups there. and I remember that um, the reaction to that film was uh, varied. Um, I had several church members say to me, I didn't like that film. I, I, I will not go see it again. They shouldn't make a film like that. It, it, it bothered me. It, it, it upset me. You see, the, the, the modern day Christianity is so used to, uh, to a, 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 a gold cross around the neck, you know, a, a sanitized version of Christianity, a, 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 you know, a, a kind of a sweet version. In fact, in so many churches today, we just skip Good Friday and just go straight to Easter. You know, we'll, we'll have a Monday Thursday service, we'll have an Easter service, but we just don't like Good Friday because it reminds us of of the the cost of sin. And when they portrayed the crucifixion, in my estimate, in a very realistic way, it bothered us. And you know what? It should bother us. It should bother us. Some things should never be forgotten, but the truth is, we do forget. You see, we forget how bad it was before we knew God. We, we forget how bad it was when we were away from God. We, we forget how bad it was to be in slavery. Several years ago, I, we started the first Celebrate Recovery at, uh, um, at the, I guess at this church was the first one I started. Uh, and have started several since then. And, and, uh, Celebrate Recovery, if you've, you've never been, is an interesting service. If it's done right, if it's done as it's supposed to be done, it, there's certain elements to the service. And one of those elements is, uh, they give chips at the end of the service. And, and the first time I ever went to Celebrate Recovery, um, <clears throat> you know, they, uh, there's a blue chip. Uh, if you'd like to start your journey tonight, you know, if, you, if you'd like to, to say no to what you're a slave to, come come get a chip. And then it's, if you've been free for six months, if you've been free for a year, if you've been free for five years, if you've been free for ten years, and, and, and people would come up and, and they would get a chip, different colors for different amounts of time, and, and they'd say, you know, I, I, I haven't had a drink in, in a year. And people would just go crazy, you know, the, the applause and the yells and people standing up and cheering and, and and listen, I, I've, I've, ever, I've not hardly had a taste of alcohol in my life, so you know I, I can't relate to that, but I can relate to some other things. And, and but the first time I saw it, I was kind of taken back. I thought, "Wow, this is this is kind of weird." But but then I realized something. I, I realized that 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 they were saying that night, "I will never forget what it's like to be in slavery." Amen. I'll never forget. And I don't want to ever forget what it's like to be free. And they were encouraging each other and reminding each other. You see, I believe that, that God in this passage in Exodus was trying to say three things to the, to the children of Israel. Three things that, 
that I think Holy Communion says to us today. Three things that I think through from Genesis to Revelation, God continuously says. Um, he continuously reminds us. In fact, if you have read the Bible from cover to cover, you know that, that it's, a, it's a repeating story. It, it, it's different stories, but it's kind of the same story. And it, it goes over and over and over again. And, and, and these three things are said. First of all, God, God says, uh, it, it's my will that you remember acts of mercy. Have you ever wondered why God identified Himself as He did in the Old Testament? Not, I am the Creator, the All-Powerful, the All-Knowing, but continuously God identifies Himself with these kinds of phrases. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Or, I'm the God who brought you up out of slavery, out of the land of of slavery into a land of promise. God identified Himself as, 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 as the God He was to their ancestors and as what He had done for them. Why did He do this? Because it was important that they remember that their God was Abraham's God, that their God was Isaac's God, that their God was Jacob's God, that the God who set their ancestors free from slavery could set them free from slavery, that the God who rained manna down for their ancestors could also feed them, that the God who parted the sea that their ancestors could cross, could part the seas of their life so that they could cross. The God that was then is the God that is now. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Amen. See, God knows that we're forgetful. We're forgetful people. That's, that's why we have ritual. That's why we have ceremonies. That's why we have repetitive things. I doubt anyone, I doubt there was a meeting at Gunnersville First Methodist Church this past year where you said, do we want to do Christmas this year? Yeah, we did it last year. We did it the year before. In fact, we've done Christmas over and over again. Let's skip Christmas and do something else. I doubt you'll have a meeting this spring that says, do we want to do Easter? You know, we've done it. But no, we look forward to Christmas. We even have a, a period of time before Christmas called Advent where we get ready for Christmas. We even have a period of time before Easter called Lent that we get ready for Easter. We, 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 in fact, I, I dare say that you could, you could say that the entire Christ, uh, uh, Christian year kind of, kind of wraps itself around significant events. Because it's important that we remember that in the providence of time, God sent His Son. It's important that we remember that Jesus chose to die on the cross for our sins. It's important that we remember that on the on, on Easter morning that the grave was empty, the tomb was empty, and Jesus is alive. We remind ourselves of that all the time. Because it's important that we remember. And it's also important that uh, every Christmas someone hears that story for the first time. And every Easter, someone decides that that blood was shed for them. See, it's God's will that we remember His acts of mercy. It's also God's will that, the, that God is saying to us, the more often we remember, the more thankful we are. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and following. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when He was betrayed, He took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it. And He said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, also, he took the cup, and after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Often. Every time. Time after time. Throughout my ministry, I'm in my 40, I don't know, 43rd year or something like that. When people have walked in and seen the communion table set, almost every Sunday I've had someone say, Oh, is this communion Sunday? I mean, you're going to preach less and we're going to have, which was not always necessarily true, but... Uh, and we're going, yeah, we're going to have communion and all. It's almost as if in the Protestant Church, in 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 the United Methodist Church, it's almost as if we think, well, we got to do communion. And then people go on the Emmaus walk, and communion's never the same. Because you see, the, the real essence here is, uh, and, and, and it's so easy, it's just like Mark was saying about the Lord's Prayer earlier. We can just read it, or we can pray it. This morning you can just come up and cup your hands and put a piece of bread in your hand and you dip it in the cup and you trot back to your seat and and you can be thinking about something else and it, it can mean a little of nothing. Or you can cup your hands and have a piece of bread put in your hands with the words, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And you can realize that when they stuck that sword in his side, he did that for you. When they ripped the flesh from his hands and his feet, he did that for you. That your very life, your very eternity, is because the body of Christ was given for you. You see, the more often we remember, the more thankful we are. And then finally, God doesn't want us to go back. The children of Israel tried to go back. We try to go back. In fact, we will go back if we stop remembering. Lot's wife just had to look back. The children of Israel said, well, at least we ate when we were in Egypt. The disciples just went fishing again. You see, if we don't remember, we'll go back. You see, my generation, my children's generation, they hardly remember a day in December that the president said would go down in infamy. It was not in their lifespan. It was not in their lifetime. They don't really remember the, the terror and the fear that our grandparents remember when Hitler was marching across Europe. Our generation remembers 9-11, but I wonder if our grandchildren will. You see, as time goes on, we, we, we just tend to forget. We, we tend to, we have these feelings. I remember the first Sunday after 9-11, it was Easter, as far as attendance was concerned. I walked out, I was in, uh, I was at Palmerdale at the time. I walked out from the contemporary service into the traditional service and the ushers were putting chairs in the aisles. But it didn't last very long. You see, God didn't want us to go back. 
And so, to keep us from going back, God says, you need to remember. You, you need to... And, 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 and in the instructions, if you read this whole Exodus passage and, and that section of the book, in the instructions, God tells Moses, you'll do this every year so that your children and their children and their children will never forget. 1 Peter 2, 9-10 says, But you... Our chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you're the people of God. Once you had not received mercy. But now you've received mercy. My dad died two years ago, and my dad was a he was a character. Um, it would take a long time for for me to describe my dad to you. I remember one day I was at my mom and dad's, and my mom and dad must have had eight freezers. And they're all just packed, you know. I mean, there's more, there's enough food to, to feed an army. And most of the time, you know, once a year, they threw away all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to eat it. And so I asked my dad, I said, Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> Why you got all this food? And he told me this story. He said, when I was a little boy, I went days without eating. I, I don't know how many days. I finally found a, a pot that somebody had thrown out their back door. And it had dried grits in the bottom of it. And I sat there and I raked those dry, dried grits out. And I ate them. He said, I'll never forget what it's like to be hungry. Amen. You see, I think Holy Communion is about never forgetting what it was like to be hungry and thirsty for forgiveness. Amen. Never forgetting what it was like not to know Jesus. Jesus. Never forgetting what it was like to be lost. So when you come up and you cup your hands and somebody puts a piece of bread in your hand and says, this is the body of Christ. It's broken for you. Yeah. Take and eat and be thankful. You remember. One more time. One day, someday, It'll be my last time to take communion. I don't know when that'll be. But one day, it'll, it'll be the last one. The next communion I'll take is literally at the feet of the Master. But until then, over and over, one more time, one more time today, We'll receive the bread. We'll dip it in the cup. And we'll be thankful. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you for this holy table. This holy moment. Sacred. Set apart. A sacrament. Where we remember one more time that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again. Where we, where we remember one more time that His body was broken, His blood was shed, so that I, so that we, so that the world could have life. May it be a sacred moment. In Jesus' name, amen.